Hi, welcome to Expert Mom. Today I am at the Burt Gilman Trail in Seattle and I'm just taking a break and I've been thinking a lot lately about unconditional love. And oftentimes our children feel that love is conditional. And I talked to my oldest daughter about this and she said, yeah, she felt like that when she was growing up. So I really started to ponder about this and I wanna make sure um, my kids don't feel that love is conditional. But you know, when I really thought about it, I can understand why some kids would think that love is conditional. Uh, for instance, uh, when they're doing well in school, they show us a report card, we praise them, we talk about how great they are. And if they show a report card with a terrible grade, we may um, take their phone or um, develop some sort of plan to help them to be more successful. Anyway, for us, of course, that is showing love by creating that type of response. But in a child's mind, sometimes they see it that um, they're not loved as much. And so, uh, since it can, that since children can kind of think, really it's, it's not the correct way of thinking, but, but a child's mind is immature. And so through that immaturity, sometimes they may feel that love is conditional. And so I have taken five steps to ensure that my kids feel that they are unconditionally loved. Number one, our words are powerful. We can build up a child or we can tear them down. And so it is important as a parent that we are very careful of our word choice. And at times I have had to apologize to my child because I showed my frustration through um, negative words. And so I have made sure that I confess. It's like, hey, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to say that. And really, especially when you're, when you got the younger ones, frustration can really be just at the forefront. And, it, and at times saying the wrong thing can be very easy, but it can also just tear down that child. And so what I have learned is one, I need to submit to God and just ask him, help me to speak words of love, words that will be uplifting and will help them to grow. And so for me, it's just kind of a submission of my tongue so that I am able to love unconditionally. Number two, love through action get out there and do stuff with your child help them to feel chosen i remember when i was a kid and we'd be playing a sport and they'd have captains and they would be standing there saying which kid they wanted on their team and i would just sit there just hoping i wasn't the last kid and then Oftentimes, I wasn't the last kid. There'd be a few times that I was, and it was just awful feelings standing there. But even if I wasn't the last kid, I would feel so devastated for the last kids, you know? And so, um, feeling chosen is a beautiful thing. And so, as a parent, we can help our child to feel chosen when we take time out to do things with them. We are choosing them over other activities or other responsibilities. Instead, we are choosing to spend time with them and they will have the feeling of being chosen. Number three, love even when you don't want to. Boy, this can be a tough one. And there are times when you have a rebellious child and they just want to do the opposite of what you ask all the time. And at times you just want to not love them. You just want to um, discipline them and be done. And so um, this is where loving unconditionally 
may not come from your heart. It comes from knowing that that is what you need to do. Love is not a feeling. Love is an action. And so as a result, you need to still love them. And that is actually the key to helping them um, get past the rebellious stage. Um, my three-year-old, she's she was very independent at three and very strong-willed. And one day we were um, leaving, five kids trying to get out the door to uh, various schools. And so getting out the door was like, I mean, you gotta really move. And um, so she was, uh, one, she didn't want to wear the outfit that I was choosing for her. She wanted her own, so that's, fine she's three she's independent we get down to the mud room and um, I was a little frustrated with that but you know I choose my battles get down to the mud room and I um, ask her to wear her boots because we were in Montana there's snow on the ground and she goes no I want to wear these shoes instead it matches my outfit I explained there's snow on the ground and, and that boots would actually be better. We could take those shoes and you could wear them later, but oh no, 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 no. She wanted to wear the other shoes. So I became frustrated and she put those shoes on and then I said, well, you need to wear this coat because this coat is warmer for the weather. Oh no, that won't look good with my outfit. I need to wear this coat. Well, I felt like yelling, but I've made a commitment to not yell at my kids. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna yell. I turn around, I walked out the door and I slammed the door. I'm not sure if that was any better than yelling, but I slammed the door. And suddenly I hear yelling from the mudroom, screaming. I opened the door and it turned out that the water filtration system had been knocked off the wall from me slamming the door and water and it broke and water was shooting everywhere so <laughs> I didn't even know how to turn the water off to the house <laughs> and so I was running around trying to figure it out trying to stop the water uh, it turned out to be a couple hours worth of um, work um, because I um, lost my temper and slammed the door <laughs> anyway um, in times of frustration, in times of dealing with strong-willed children, we still need to love them. Um, I know even if you, if you have a child that shares different values, and I do, he's an adult now, but through that, those teen years of um, just a whole other set of values than my own, at times, I had to intentionally love them, love him, and not um, and not be concerned about um, his the difference of values. That's unconditional love. Is when you choose to love, even though there's so many different parameters that make it more feeling like an unnatural thing to love. So the tough one. Number four, discipline without shaming. Remember the ultimate goal is to help your child to make better choices. And so if you shame your child, uh, then it really ruins the ultimate goal. And so I, I have a nag free project, uh, which has worked for me, it's taken out the conditional love feeling and um, I'll link that um, in the video as well as down below and so that's a, an excellent way to approach um, unconditional love through discipline. Number five, help your child to understand that God's love is unconditional and really this is important for their foundation, that they understand that God is not a bunch of rules, that instead He created us to be in relationship with Him, and that He desires to be in a close, intimate relationship, 
even when we are rebellious, He still loves us. He is there for us. He desires to be close to us, even if we aren't behaving. And so it is important for kids to understand that whole aspect of God. And uh, so many times children desire to be loved unconditionally because they're feeling that they're not getting that fulfilled. And so it is important that they understand that God is there for them. Loving our kids unconditionally helps to develop a strong foundation for growth and development. It is so important that we strive to love unconditionally, but also to help them to understand that we love them no matter what. All right, you have a great day and love those kids.